All right, what is up, y'all? We are on episode 59 of Your House, Our Rules. We got some interesting things to talk about today, some shit that hits a little bit close to heart. We've talked about it a couple times, me and Stolze have on the podcast, and that is the fucking just destruction that uh, Activision has on our everyday life uh, all the way around, and they're at it again. But this time, they might have dug themselves into a hole that they cannot get themselves out of. I don't know. Uh, they, they just released an update, and they're, they are getting some good numbers right now, but the whole thing that brings this about is, if you don't know, you've been living under a rock. Nick Merckx tweeted out about, in regards to, like, this Antifa thing where, like, they were protesting, and it got violent, and it was for, like, kids and stuff like that. But uh, just in regards to that, he said they should leave children alone. That's the real issue here. And that's all he said. He didn't really say anything, didn't take any sides to, to it, but... Activision ended up pulling his bundle from the actual game. So he had his character in game that you could play as. And when they saw this tweet, they decided to just remove it completely from Call of Duty. Now, uh, after that, there was kind of this chain reaction where like some of the other famous streamers and some of his really good friends, like Tim the Tatman, uh, who also had a bundle, tweeted at them telling them to remove his bundle and Activision obliged. And then uh, Dr. Disrespect, who might be the biggest streamer out there, even though it's probably XQC. <clears throat> but he came out and... Uh, he basically uninstalled the game and said, hey, I'm not playing until they restore his bundle or at least po- apologize or something. But we haven't seen that, and things have just been kind of going downhill for uh, for Call of Duty and Activision ever since. They did just have COD Champs this past weekend, which was fairly successful. I saw over 100,000 people in there at certain times of it, but uh, also most of the time I watched with, it was what Optic played, which they usually get the most. Yeah, yeah they, they usually get the most. On screen. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they it's kind of weird to see what's going on. We don't really know what's going on like as a whole, but I think we're going to learn a lot more this week now that Champs is gone and now that the uh, a new um, update that they released is, is going on. But, yeah, how, how do you guys feel about this situation uh, at all? We'll start with Stolze because he probably knows a little bit more about it. I mean, it's like it's so much bigger than just Activision doing, you know, like business decisions because, like, Activision's a big time company. Like it is it's huge. Like publicly traded. There is bigger money than we know coming in and out of this industry because like this is huge. It's like video games are huge. Ever yeah. since the pandemic, twenty twenty, video games have taken over in terms of everyday microtransactions, free to play games, making all more money than you know, normal sixty dollar games. It just it feels like there's an agenda being pushed to the point where, and it's it's not even if you have, <clears throat> like it's not even if you have any issues with an LGBTQ or anything like that. It's yeah. like, and you know what's crazy about it is you remember I've heard a couple people bring it up, but like for the original Modern Warfare game back in like 2008, what was it or whatever Call of Duty Four, they had like seven. an advertisement that was like incredibly incredibly homophobic and that they were using to mm-hmm. try and pull in like that genre of people that those type of people what, what was it i don't know but like i think they were like openly alluding to, they, I know they, what it is. they were like a lo- openly uh um alluding to the f word and like they had like an acronym that spelled out a uh, fag so uh, like um well they had um fng they changed it to FNG because they got in trouble for the fag i'm pretty sure because remember fng turned into fucking new guy Hmm. I don't. I don't. It was like one of the first. It was like when you were a private when you first got on the Modern Warfare Two. Yeah. It would FNG with like the woodland camouflage. Yeah. And it stood for fucking or FNG. Yeah, FNG. Fucking new guy. Okay. So yeah, I mean that that was the type of shit. But like even back then they were doing it, and now they're kind of taking this stance where it's like, oh, you can't even. And Nick Merckx didn't even really tweet anything uh, about him. It just fucking that they've hit this agenda so hard that they want to be this new progressive like left this company, I guess, and get people removed for tweets that they really shouldn't. And it's starting to back backlash on them. And I mean, we've seen this with stuff like Target and Bud Light recently. Honestly, I'm getting tired mm-hmm. of ta- talking about the situation. But it's like, wh- why can't these companies just be companies? Like, I understand Target to a certain extent. I even understand Bud Light to a certain extent. But we're talking about games. When it comes down to it, like, the Xbox 360 lobbies that we knew back in the day are some of the most savage fucking people <laughs> right. of all time. And, like, now we're getting upset about stupid-ass tweets like this and removing fucking creator bundles? Are you serious? Right. Like, like, the wh- shit that Call of Duty lets go on in a lobby-to-lobby basis day-to-day. 
Yeah. Like that's what some people have been talking about. They're like, you know what? You remove his bundle for this, a guy who's helping bring in fucking millions of people to like watch your game. Or he's one of the game. only people. Yeah. One of the only people. And yet you still actively do nothing about your in-game servers and like the chat chat boxes that you have, because realistically there could be like parental uh like restrictions or something on there to like limit the age of people or you know maybe group people of certain ages and demographics into ways like there's ways to do that there's ways to figure that out but they just don't do it they just let it go that's why online gaming has no rating it's not rated m or whatever because you can get on and run into anybody just about anybody right yeah but jeff you got anything to say over there about uh about this whole situation. I know you're not as big of into I like mean, the streaming and like that that whole like Nick Merckx and stuff. I've been watching Nick Merckx since I, uh, I since Gears of War in fucking like 2008. So pay a decent bit of attention to to it, you know, yeah. especially, you know, like with everything that it ties into, but I mean, you pretty much covered, you know, it with the connections to to other major companies and stuff like that and I mean, it's just like the sentiment just continues to ring true. Go woke, go broke. Yeah. It's just going to keep, it's just, well, you know. And one thing I was going to say too is like, we put our, like, as gamers, we, we load up our games, we put our headsets on, we jump into whatever lobby we're getting into, and we disagree. Like, what's the first, th somebody goes in, hey, anybody have a mic? What's the first thing you say, Spilly? Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Bingo. We don't agree with each other. Yeah. We don't agree with each other. The fact that there is a mass community of gamers just blatantly, one-sidedly agreeing to the fact that Nick Merckx is not in the wrong here and Activision needs to back the fuck up yeah. is alarming. Yeah. <laughs> like, we now, don't agree. Now, here's the thing, though. Like, you were playing Call of Duty before. Like, right, right before we started this podcast yeah. up and stuff like that. Like, you're still playing. The question is, are they going to be able to, like make this or not they i said is is the is the scenario going to be big enough to like get to your just like normal run-of-the-mill gamer and make them stop playing the game because like the big dogs who are fucking doing it are but like even someone like you who's been following it for call of duty for a while now you're a little bit different because you are a hardcore cod guy but like right. the the point is like a certain number of people are definitely because of all this going to stop playing the game and there are people who's like a, a match with that agenda but are they willing to like quit the game because i was watching blame truth I, the other day he was he was talking about he's like a lot of people don't need to understand that like the reason why they're getting up is because 60 dear, year old dads are playing call of duty and they're only allowed to play like one hour a day and they just dropped a new update so that's the game that they're playing right now and of course he's like there's nothing wrong with that and there is nothing wrong with that but maybe we're starting to see a point where like because the game was decreasing uh call of duty beforehand maybe it's gotten to a <clears> point where they can't do anything about it were you I saying, think Jeff? the bigger influence uh, in that aspect wouldn't be from people that have a problem like with the situation. I think that they'll lose more people on the back end from the influencers that stop playing the game because most people are going to follow the leader well, and be like, oh, Dr. Disrespect's not playing that anymore. Tim the Tatman's not playing that anymore. And there's like so much of the youth, like whatever is cool or in fashion or right. whatever, like these major streamers are doing like little kids well, are just obsessed with and follow and that like, was and like even though they don't have a problem with with what's actually causing it they'll follow suit just because their favorite streamers yeah. are doing it but They're that influencers. was the that was the point that i was just trying to make and that might pertain to a lot of other games like like league of legends or csgo where it's so intergrained with like the competitive community like the streaming and stuff like that call of duty isn't like that call of duty is kind of an anomaly in the sense that like People buy that game. There's a reason why it's such a popular game because people buy it without having like that streamer guy or whatever. You go on to Twitch. Well, you go on the Twitch and look at like uh, even Warzone or Call of Duty. They're not doing nearly as well as these other games like League of Legends or whatever. But the amount of people playing them is astronomically higher. So yeah, well, that's it's. I think that's kind of because like the same phenomenon that's kind of going on with Diablo Four right now. Like so many people that are playing D4 are playing it because of nostalgia from playing D2 when they were kids. Mm -hmm. And so many of the, like the player base of COD is older people that, you know, might have kids and stuff like that now that still religiously play that game because that's the shooter, the franchise that they've played for 
20 well, years I back think, now. I think there's a lot, there are a lot of kids that play Call of Duty too, and that's because I think that like those dads Definitely. that you are saying are influencing their kids, not influencing, but because they're the kids see their dad playing the video game, they're going to end up playing Call well, of Duty too. Well, that and, and the streamers as well, bringing that attention to it. But yeah. if the streamers are jumping ship, those kids that are just following suit will likely jump ship as well. Yeah, well, well, we'll see. Because uh, I'm uh, I'm more of a believer that there it's not necessarily because the streamers, for Call of Duty at least, for other games, it definitely is but for call of duty i think that it's just such this big phenomenon that like the only way they're really going to kill this game is if they just keep making shitty decisions and that i think the point that me and stolzy are trying to make i don't want to speak for stolzy but it's just starting to get to a point where like if you know you know they've just made shitty decision after shitty decision after shitty decision after shitty decision and now we're here where like the people who are trying to get people to play your fucking game are getting outed from the community because of how shitty the fucking company is. They don't give a fuck. Activision sucks. So yeah. and if <clears throat> if you look at what I just put on the screen too, it's like all they care like they keep talking about this skill based matchmaking stuff and all they you know, they want to be welcoming to the new players. Mm -hmm. They want to be welcoming to the dads that can only play, you know, however long a night. So <clears throat> this right here literally and I I I personally like tested this with the Tim the Tapman bundle. When when you're when you're spending COD points on bundles, it puts you into easier lobbies with people that don't have the bundle, so they see a guy going off with, with the bundle, bundle, so they'll buy the bundle. Easier. Yeah, yeah. Like the lobbies that you get after you get a new bundle is like it's night and day. I didn't know that. That's actually pretty fucking insane. It's actually. But yeah, the yeah, Activision so Activision's been doing this for fucking over a decade now. They they know how it right, works. They're just hiding it. Yeah. Like they, they didn't hide it in like advanced warfare with the loot crates and everything. Like now that it's just like everything is so hidden behind yeah. all closed door hidden mat hidden matchmaking ranks and skill based matchmaking and all that shit. Nothing is transparent. No. There's nerfs that they don't talk about. Guns get worse, guns get better. You gotta sit there and like, it's the dumbest thing yeah, ever. Yeah, we still say that there's no fucking skill-based matchmaking, but ever since Advanced Warfare, it has been prevalent that there has been a, a, not just skill-based matchmaking, because there's a lot that goes into it, but there's Almost a like pri there's a priority on skill-based matchmaking yeah. in their matchmaking system. So, And that's just one thing that has drawn a lot of people off, because, <clears> you know, they want to hit a casual gamer, but I feel like people don't want to play the game casually like that if you're getting matched up in lobbies that are going to bring everyone closer to a one kill to death ratio. I mean, it might be easier for the new player to get in, but once that new player gets a little bit decent, they're not going to be able to like start shredding kids and want to play that game anymore. Because arena right. shooters, let's face it, arena shooters, they're they're getting stale. Like it's hard to play arena shooters for us at least, with us being in our 30s and playing them since the day we were born, basically. It, it they're just starting to get stale, man. So that's what it, I play. Yeah, but, but that's where <clears throat> that's where they need to make a switch in their game type now. And in order to do or their game. I guess game type would be a good way to put it, but the, now we're starting to see like a whole political side of it. And if there's one thing that we're noticing with this is that getting into politics and video game is just going to split people right down the middle. And if you're losing half of your playership, like what's the fucking point? Right. The whole point of video games is it's not real life. Yeah. Yeah. The entire point. No way. Grand Theft Auto is real life. <laughs> Role play, I'll give it to you. I was about to say they do have some role playing channels and stuff. Like role play that. is awesome. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched Jamar Chase role play on? No, GTA? I would. He streams he's, himself he's, on Twitch all the time. I've heard about it. I've definitely he's heard hilarious. about it. Uh, uh, I love Jamar. Yeah, but do we have any closing comments on the whole Nick Merck's situation in Activision? Free my man. Free my man for real. I was got into this a little <laughs> bit before, but I have straight up been watching Nick Merck since he was on the Insanes in fucking like Gear, OG Gears of War. Like I think the first time I heard his name was 2010, 20, 2009 or something like that. So I almost known this dude for 15 years. I didn't really, I followed him back then because he was playing MLG. It was hard to really find content back in the day. But when I really got into him was that he used to play S&D Black Ops 3, Call of Duty. And that's how yeah. I really like got into like, viewing him on a regular basis so yeah you got any closing comments there jeffy nope all right well with that being said let us know in the comments what you think about this whole nick merck situation what you think about activision and if you think it's justifiable or if you think they should just apologize and give his fucking bundle back make it really easy but peace <laughs>